All right, and we are live. live. Welcome, Welcome to Nothing But Net. I'm Sandy Brown, owner of the Toledo Brett Women's Professional Basketball Organization. And we are here with Nothing But Net for episode five. It's already been our fifth episode, so I'm super excited. We have a special treat for you guys this evening. Uh, our guest is none other than the all-star leading scorer for Ohio State University and NBA champion with the Chicago Bulls, Mr. Dennis Hopson. Thank you, Sandy. I'm glad that we finally got a chance yes. to reconnect. Um, yes, yes. I know we haven't been around each other. Well, we've been around each other, but yes. as far as being on the air with one another, BCSN day, so... Yeah, it's been a Glad while. Glad to connect with you again. Yeah, it's good to get to be back on the media end. That's right. <laughs> the broadcast end with you, Dennis. Um, so we're going to just get right into um, into things, uh, Dennis. One, I'm honored that you're here with me. We always talk about, you know, um, us, you know, working together. But it, it's always an honor when you take time out of your busy schedule to come and be a part of anything that um, I have going on and vice versa. So thank you so much for being here. Um, so let's get right into it. Dennis. Um, for people who do not know you, which is not very many, if you don't oh, know who Dennis right, Hobson is, right. let me tell you something. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Dennis, you are a legend here, right here in the city of Toledo. So um, give us a little background. Tell us about yourself for those who don't know you out there. Born and raised here in Toledo, Ohio. I'm the baby of five. Okay. And, um, you know, I've had great fond memories of the city of Toledo. And it's funny, Sandy, because I think, and you did it. You, um, you get older, you move away. Yeah. And then you come to appreciate, you know, what your hometown stood for, what it's all about. And, you know, all the people that reached out to you and kind of coddled you and, and, and taught you the, the, the way. So, you know, it's funny that um, you always say you don't want to come back yeah. where you're <laughs> yeah. from. But yeah. at the end of the day, I think I made a great move um, after our situation in Bowling Green by coming back to the city of Toledo. Because, again, having that opportunity to give it back mm -hmm. to um, a city that gave to me along my journey was um, something that um, I wanted to do, and, and I'm happy that I decided to do it. Yeah, and you know, Dennis, a lot of people in general, you know, we have a lot of, you know, excellent players who come mm -hmm. out of the city of Toledo, and, you know, a lot of people do. They don't come back. Mm -hmm. They don't come back, and, you know, one of many, and, you know, there are a few of us who will come back and try to, you know, invest back into the community. So I think that says a lot, especially you and the status that the status that you were and the status that you still are um, for you to come back home to a small to a small city like Toledo and want to give back and invest um, into our future and to our youth. I think it says a lot about you. It just it, it tells who you are. Yeah, this I is who your character yeah, is. This yeah, is who you are. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I have my family here and uh, again, uh, the city embraced me, the community, the state. So it's, again, I was, I've been in Florida. I've been all over the place. I've been over in Europe. So to have the opportunity to come back mm -hmm. again, just, um, it's, it's exciting for me. And again, it's even more exciting for me to give it back to uh, some of the youth and anybody I can help. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be young, but anybody I can help. It's just exciting to be able to do that. And, and I mean, what an, a huge opportunity for our youth and young people and anyone who's working with you in the basketball realm to be able to work with you. Because, I mean, we're talking to the all-time leading scorer I'm, for the Ohio State University right here. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm the all-time leading scorer. <laughs> no, no, actually, I, uh, I play with great teammates. Okay. And I think, again, a lot of people want to give me a lot of credit for some of the things that I've done on the basketball court. But you need people. And right. um, I, I had great teammates that I played with at, at Ohio State and in high school. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in the pros. So uh, again, it's not something that I accomplished on my own. I right. was, I was helped. And again, you try to return the favor by, by helping others. And like you say, if I can get a son or a daughter over to uh, a training, mm -hmm. hey, I, I'm, I'm all for that. You know, yeah. I'm not saying I do anything, anything different from a lot of other people, but I will say that I've been around a game and it's not always about teaching the game. You have to mm. explain I mean, you're teaching right. things. It's That's not, right. it's not about here's the basketball. I want you to dribble through this cone, but you have to teach kids and explain to them why why they're doing what they're doing. So, yeah. again, I mean, I, I'm, I'm honored to be able to still be healthy enough to uh, – <laughs> I'm getting old now. I'm getting That's old, right. but I'm okay uh, to, to, to then teach if you people. Can, oh, I, can you still go above rim? It depends on what day it is. <laughs> now, if, if I had to do it today, no. But tomorrow I might feel a little better than what right, I do today. Right. But, you know, I, 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 I know I put a clip on, on Facebook maybe a couple years ago of me still dunking out. I haven't done it since then, though, Sandy. So that oh, tells really? you that I'm getting over it. Right, right. No, that's cool, though, Dennis. But I think you are because you are a very humble person. And I think you're being a little modest here on the show tonight. But, I mean, yes, it definitely took your teammates to help you out. 
you know, and, and gaining that title. But I mean, come on, Dennis, your senior year, you averaged what twenty nine points a game. I did, but you know what? It's 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 you know you, you got to put the buckets in the basket. You do, but you need somebody to give you the ball in order to put it in the you're basket. Right. And you're I think right. again, it's it's everybody has an ego. Everybody wants to be a scorer. I mean, everybody thinks that you. If you're not scoring, you're not great. Right. But everybody has a job. And yeah. my job was to score the basketball, and I had guys that understood that. Mm -hmm. And that's not always – you don't always get that type of buy-in yeah. when you're dealing with, with programs. But I was just fortunate that I had to buy in. Mm -hmm. And um, those guys, they, they took care of me. And, and, and every time I get the opportunity when people ask me about – being the all-time leading scorer, I'm going to make sure I give a shout-out to my guys that oh, yeah. I play with at, at Ohio State. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, and I definitely feel you on that, Dennis. Um, now, I do want to chime in to obviously um, to talk about some of your professional career, um, being a third pick mm -hmm. um, in NBA draft. Well, I guess talk, talk to us about that. Well, uh, take us back. 87, you, NBA you, draft. I'll take you back. Actually, the draft is at night, so I, I, you know, I always get excited when, yes. when, when you know the upcoming drafts are taking place. But – Go back 1987 again. I think I put myself in a position to be drafted high, and it's funny because I could have went one, two, three, or four, mm -hmm. but I took visits to Phoenix. Mm. Okay, Phoenix had number two pick, Jersey had number three, and then the Clippers had number four. Okay, and so with myself and Reggie Williams out of Georgetown, we were ranked number one and number two sh shooting guards in the country that year. Right, um, Big Ten Player of the Year. Yeah, Thought yeah, I that out yeah, there too. yeah. And then Reggie, <laughs> Reggie was Big East Player of the Year um, out of Georgetown, so. I knew if Jersey took mm -hmm. Reggie at number three, then the Clippers would have took me at number four. Mm. Um, now, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be a high pick. I think if I had to do it all over again, I would have been a little more selfish than what I was. I kind of, I've never played a game in a selfish way. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just, I, I, I kind of traded lightly. Um, and, you know, being a rookie, just yeah. trying to buy my time. Yeah, Even though I started sure. a lot of games as a rookie, um, I think that was one of the biggest things. If I had to do it all over again, I would have been selfish. And, mm -hmm. and, and I don't want you to take that the wrong way or people that's listening to this right yeah, now. You don't take sure. that the wrong way. But I was a scorer coming out of college. That's so right. nobody was going to restrict me from scoring. But I was also a team player mm -hmm. coming out of college as well. So, again, took took each step as it, as it came. And, um, um, you know, averaged nine points a game as a, as a rookie, uh, 12 points, I think, as – 12 point something in my second year and then I mm -hmm. averaged I led a team in scoring my With third year. Yeah, yeah, I led them in scoring, but again, it, it was a great opportunity for uh to achieve something like the NBA because mm -hmm. as a kid, if had you asked me did I want to be an NBA player, I would have told you no because that wasn't really? the focus. No. That, I mean, what? I know I know why you say really because if you ask a kid today what do you want to be most of the time it's either an athlete that's or, right. or a, a rapper that's right that's right that's what they want to be but right. you know it's funny i wanted to be either a truck driver or a race car driver oh wow you know, that's what my aspirations are yeah that. yep yep so you know to have that opportunity to experience something that i really wasn't focused on mm -hmm. um but a lot of people are focused on that yeah. you know it, it, it was great because you know one out of uh, so many get that opportunity to to be a yeah. professional uh, player, yes. professional athlete, I should say. So, I, I mean, I was blessed. I was blessed. No, for sure. And I think, you know, a, a lot of people, like you mentioned, a lot of younger athletes, you know, can only dream to mm -hmm. go as far as you went mm -hmm. um, and being in, in the NBA. Not only were you just in the NBA, you you got a ring, yeah, Dennis. You, a ring. you have a ring. You played, you know, with Michael Jordan. And, you know, you got a ring with the with the Chicago Bulls. That, that's huge. There's NBA players top players who can't even say that it is but you know i, I would tell you this um you know it, it, it's it, i get frustrated when i think about it mm -hmm. not like i used to but mm -hmm. you know when i got traded my me and, and the head coach i had four coaches in okay. three years in new jersey and uh, my last one was bill fitch and me and him didn't see eye to eye mm -hmm. now granted my third year i led the team in scoring mm -hmm. i got traded after that and i'll never forget i was at my basketball mm -hmm. camp at, at uh, rogers high school um, I got a phone call, and they said that you had been traded to Chicago. Wait, now, here in Toledo? Here in Toledo. That's where you found out? Yep, wow. Yep, yep. Here wow. in Toledo. I had just had knee surgery, and um, I got that call, and they said you were traded to Chicago. Now, once all the campers and people found out, everybody was happy about the trade, and you know mm -hmm. why. Well, you're getting a chance to go play right. with Michael you Jordan. Play with Michael Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I wasn't, oh, and, and I have nothing against Mike. Right. But I wasn't overly excited about that because I knew what the situation was going to be. You know, and I had just got through averaging, big. yeah, averaging sixteen, close to sixteen points a game, and leading the team in scoring that year. You ain't gonna get no minutes playing there behind you go. Michael Jordan. There you go, there you go. <laughs> and so it was, it was very, very. I didn't look at it as being a um, 
me, I, I wasn't excited about it. So mm -hmm. it was one of those scenes where if you were going to trade me, why not trade me just somewhere to where I was just getting my confidence? Yeah, yeah, let me continue to grow help. my confidence. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was it was a, it was tough, Sandy, mm -hmm. um, playing that year in Chicago. Um, but it did teach me something. It brought back the competitive side mm. of the game because I think I kind of lost the competitive side in New Jersey because of the situation. Right. It was a franchise that's always been down where mm -hmm. they had been down for years. Mm -hmm. Now they had great players there. The Otis Bird song was there. Buck Williams was there. Oh, wow. uh, Roy Henson. So I, had yeah. a, I got a chance to play with some of the better players. But those guys had been there for a while. But mm -hmm. the East Coast for me coming from the Midwest was tough and then playing on a team like that. So mm -hmm. being traded to Chicago, you know, the city's great. You know, they love sports in yeah. Chicago. More importantly, the guys brought back the competitive side of basketball for me. So – that's what it did do. I was going to ask, so were the practices different as far as, like, competitive? Because I can only imagine, you know, we've seen the stories about Michael Jordan mm -hmm. and, you know, different things and just his aggressiveness and how he is even in practice. Mm -hmm. Was there a difference in practice with the Nets versus practice with the Bulls? It was. He was a competitor because – he was after something, mm -hmm. you know, and that was the first year. That was the first year we won that. But yeah. he was after. He, he tried so hard for many, many years to accomplish something that he couldn't accomplish. But he was so focused. He was so driven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to think about that, that second team, myself, Cliff Livingston, B.J. Armstrong, Stacey mm -hmm. King, you know, uh, Craig Hodges. There was a lot yeah. of great guys, Scott Williams, on that second team. So the practices, it started in the training room. We were getting yes. our ankles taped. Okay. You know, okay. red versus white. Everybody just kind of talking back and forth about oh, wow. what was going to happen in practice. So okay. I like great, that. Yeah, I like that. That's what that's what <laughs> Chicago did. And again, I think Michael. Again, I know what people saw during this documentary. Mm -hmm. You know, but all that stuff is not. I mean, him jumping on players. At least he didn't jump on anybody when I was around. Right, okay, right. but but he was competitive. Yeah, everything that he does did. Mm -hmm. He, he, was going, he, he was competitive doing it. And then you see that, too, as well. It's kind of lacking now in today's game mm -hmm. anyway. You know, some players really do need a leader to step up and get in their face and say, let's go, we got this, and push you harder. Mm -hmm. But you don't you don't see that too often No, you don't. Uh, and nowadays. It, it, and it's funny that you say that. It, it's, um, it, it's like I, I asked my coaches mm -hmm. at Lords. I said, you know, whose personality mm -hmm. we want this team to take after on our team oh, at wow. Lords? And Michael Jordan had that personality to where, okay, I'm okay with the team following behind his personality. Mm -hmm. And most teams, if you want to be good, they should establish somebody. It's not about just picking a wow, captain. I never even thought about no, it. No, like exactly. That. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about picking captains. I can pick a captain. Right. But at the end of the day, whose personality mm -hmm. would you mm -hmm. want your team to take after? That's right. And, and right now, and, and again, I hope, hopefully my guys, hopefully you're watching. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 don't, we, don't have, we, don't, we don't have right now, mm -hmm. we don't have that personality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I want the team to take after. Yeah. We're still looking for it. Yeah, and, and that's okay. And that's something that takes time, takes though. Time. It definitely takes time, especially when you're re rebuilding a mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and establishing, you know, who are your leaders on the team mm -hmm. and different things of that nature. So, no, for sure. I never even thought about that way. Yeah. Damn, the time I had to use that <laughs> one with a couple of my that's girls, right. too. Um, but no, but no, I just think that, you know, that's awesome. I definitely want to touch you know, on just your, your career in general. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone probably talks to you about basketball mm -hmm. all the time, um, but there's so many other great things that you're doing besides basketball you just allow basketball to kind of lead the way exactly um and I do I want to kind of touch base when it comes to like because right now you're a head coach at Lords mm -hmm. University and you know a lot of people could say why Lords mm -hmm. you know with your status and you know where you've come from you could be honestly at any school <laughs> you know what you know what Sandy is it's one of those things if people might say why Lords mm -hmm. but I don't look at it that way I look mm -hmm. at it I'm doing something that I love to do. More importantly, I'm mm -hmm. looking at, I have the opportunity to give back right. a lot of things that were given to me. Yeah, you know what, before I even touch base on that, so I think it was back when you actually had the option, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2015 or 2014, a while back, to where you made a decision, you made a big mm -hmm. decision to I where did. you could either, you know, be a coach mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of, but the basketball coaching aspect aside to come back to the community. Um, talk about that. 2014, okay. um, was at Bowling Green for five years. Got there, I think, 2009. Mm -hmm. um, towards the last year and a half, we started to struggle a little bit. So they got rid of the head coach. Mm -hmm. New coach came in, got rid of all the assistant coaches. Oh, okay. Now, I interviewed with Wright State right after that. Billy Donovan, he, Donovan, mm -hmm. he wanted to hire me from Wright State. <clears throat> Went down, to, uh, went down to Dayton, talked to him for a little bit, and um, he wanted to hire me. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Billy, give me, 
<clears throat> excuse me, give me um, a week to think about it. Okay. During that week, Sandy, I combed the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I combed the city, okay, and um, didn't like what I was seeing in regards to our youth. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I, um, I, I called Billy and I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away from the game for a little bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's what I did. Okay. I stepped away from the game and I said, let me try to get actively involved in the community and give back to a group that deserves mm. uh, for somebody like me to give back to them. Because, I mean, again, why have the knowledge that's right. and not share it? Right. And again, it's not always about the sport, but the sport has done so Thanks. The sport had done so much for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just want the kids to know, like you just said, yeah. the sport opened a lot of doors for me. That's and it's still opening doors for me. So, again, if I can get a younger group under my tutelage, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. Because, again, why keep something that I know can help others yeah, and, or somebody anyway? And I agree with you with that. I think just in general, you know, after you've given so much to, you know, the sport of basketball and after you've gained so much knowledge, mm -hmm. and then I can only imagine what that felt like for you to walk around or, you know, drive around just to see your city and the, and the need, mm -hmm. to see the need to give back. And the fact that you, you know, you made a really big decision because most people would have took the right state coaching job. Right. Um, Cause you think you think about dollars, you think about money, you think about finances and everything else, you know, comes into part with that. But you, it's, that's why it continues, it continues to show a lot about your character um, and your passion just for, our future yeah, in, yeah. in the youth. You know, I teach my son this. All money's not good money. Okay. okay. And there, there's nothing, there There wouldn't have been anything illegal about the money coming from mm -hmm. right state. Yeah. But at the end of the day, do the right things, the money will come. That's, I, I'm, I'm never, I'm never, I never worry about I that. I promise you, I just said this a couple of days ago. Yeah, do the right things. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot of people are, come. you know, they're almost, you know, concerned with, you know, status mm -hmm. or the job specifically that they're doing. But I'm, I'm a firm believer in that as, as well. If you're doing things that's going to help someone that's else, right. the money will definitely that's right. come. Just do your part. Yeah, you that's know, right. You know your job, do your job. Okay, mm -hmm. and you'll be rewarded somewhere or another. So. That's right. That's all right. So, so you, you know, you, you made the decision to kind of put the basketball aside for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, you've been in the community, um, you know, as far as, uh, just basketball in general. Mm -hmm. So you, you have, you've worked for the YMCA as a basketball operations mm -hmm. director. Um, you, and you have the Hobson Elite, even, mm -hmm. even right now, some things that you've been doing and still doing, um, kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Well, it, it started, it started when I, when I, when we left Bowling Green and I decided to stay here in the city, mm -hmm. it started with me funding a fifth and sixth grade league for TPS. Okay. Okay. Because I know some years back they took away junior high, well, I'm sorry, elementary, elementary sports. Yeah. And people don't understand that, you know, in order to fall in love with something, you probably want to, or something young. like a sport. Yeah, yeah. you want to start young. Mm -hmm. um, you can't, you can't, you can't expect a 16 year old to pick up a basketball and say, oh, I love the game. I mean, right. what have you been doing <laughs> before the age of 16? Right. But so, so, so I, I was, I was committed to doing that for TPS, got a lot of schools involved. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great success. Yeah. So after that, like you said, you know, just started working kids out, teamed up with um, the Fury uh, for a while, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, after teaming up with them, I was able to do some personal training. And one thing led to another. And then what I decided to do was I decided to bring Hobson Elite back. Mm. Hobson Elite, I started in Columbus years ago. Yeah. And the reason I had to drop Hobson Elite, Sandy, was because I got hired as a D1 assistant coach. And when you're on a NCAA level, you're not allowed to be affiliated That's with right. any AAU programs or camps or clinics or anything. So mm -hmm. I had to drop it. Ah. And actually had given the program to a guy. He named it Elite Basketball Club. He took okay. the hops and off of it. Okay. So, you know, again, on an NAI level, which, I, again, people ask why, maybe the NAI level, because mm -hmm. I'm still able to do a lot of things yeah. on yeah. this level that I wouldn't be able to do on the NCAA level. Right. I can still have hops in elite. I can still go out and train kids. I can still have camps. I can have clinics. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff is important. Again, yeah, I might not be making a ton of money mm -hmm. at Lord's, but, again, it's not always yeah. about the money. It's about helping people, again, sharing information that – was given to me some time ago. Yeah, and and elaborate a little bit on the Hops and Elite for those who do not know, um, who are watching right now, what Hops and Elite actually is. It's a, it's a it's a full blown AAU program, mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's, it's it's gotten better every year. Started a few years back, and um, we go from the seventh grade mm -hmm. up to seventeen U, 
Um, this year was a down year. We didn't get started when we were supposed COVID, to get started yeah. in the spring, which everybody knows. But we were able to play in July. Okay. Had some, had some, had some guys that's, that's went mid major. Guy just committed went high major. Nice. Uh, so you know, again, we're 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 local, mm -hmm. and I try to keep it local. I know some of the bigger programs they just get kids from all over the place. But right. my thing is, is this, Sandy. It's not about playing in the tournaments. It's about being able to practice twice a week. Man. Because that's where you get better, you know, in Learning. practice. That's right. Yes. We learn, we teach. It's not about just assembling a group of all stars mm -hmm. and coming together on a weekend and trying to go out and win a tournament. Right. At the end of the day, we got to teach the game of basketball. If we Sorry. can teach the game of basketball, then the kids are going to be okay. And that, that's one thing that I love about your program just in general. You didn't even have to tell me that. I wouldn't know that just off of knowing your character. If you're a part of Hobson Elite, you're guaranteed to learn mm -hmm. the game of basketball. And, 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 of course, everyone wants to win. But once you learn the game, winning comes easy That's Right. once That's you know right. what you're doing. So um, I just kind of wanted to make sure our viewers out there, you know, <laughs> heard heard at least the details behind it in case there are any boys or younger guys out there yeah. who, who are interested um, in joining your program. So, but you were talking about, we, we talked about, you know, the NAIA and the why, and mm -hmm. you, you've been explaining, you know, it's not always um, about the money, but I think that, and I kind of just want to get your opinion about this, um, Dennis. I think the NAIA, you know, within the HBCUs, it's something that's kind of trending mm -hmm. right now to where it's getting more attention, you know, with everything that's been happening recently this year um, and just wanting to support, you know, the black culture um, and, and just NAIA in general. So, You know, I, I think having a lot of different leagues, mm -hmm. it opens up for more opportunity for some of the kids. Okay. okay? Because, Sandy, you played high major math. Everybody's not going to go to a high major school. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to go to a power five. Right. Okay. But you know what? People still need, people still desire them, still want to play the game, basketball, football, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you like. That's right. And on a, the lower level, like an NAI, okay, it gives you that opportunity mm -hmm. because, again, you might not be good enough to play power five basketball. That's so, true. But at the end of the day, you're still doing something that you love to do, mm -hmm. and that's play the game of basketball. So when you look at myself on the NAI level, and, and we can't get full scholarships. We're a four-year school. We don't get full scholarships, mm -hmm. but we have an average, okay? Yeah. So I can kind of finagle that in any way that I want to just as long as we stand under our average. Mm. And, and people look at somebody like a Deion Sanders. He just got hired. Right, HBC. State. Exactly, that's you know. Right. Trust me, Dion is not looking at the level. Mm -hmm. Dion is looking at I'm, I have an opportunity to coach, yeah. and I have an opportunity to share a lot yeah. of knowledge. That's that's yeah. that's all he's looking at. But can you imagine the 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 effect that something to this nature can have if more of our athletes who mm -hmm. have been at the higher levels, and you know, like a Dion Sanders, like a Dennis mm -hmm. Hobson, mm -hmm. will come back to those smaller schools um, in AIA and really give back. Um, to the community, imagine the effect that that could have on as far as the 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 talent, it, the athleticism it, that comes out of the game it, as well. That's right. And again, I applaud people when, when as soon as he got hired. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I went online and I, I looked up. You know, I wanted to hear what he was talking about. Right. Right. And you can just hear and see all the energy yeah. that he had when he was doing his press conference or the interviews that he had. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's a ton of energy because you know what. I'm still doing something that I love to do. That's right. I'm not able to play anymore, mm -hmm. but I'm able to coach and I'm able to give back. And again, I, I coached at Bedford High School for a year. That's okay? right. That's right. After we got after we got uh, let go in Bowling Green, mm -hmm. I didn't have a I didn't have a nephew. I didn't have a a, a, a <laughs> grandson. I didn't know any of those kids when I took that job. Right. Okay. Right. But at the end of the day, I like I love the game of basketball. Yeah, and again, I, I love to, to share. Yeah. So yeah. So. You know, like you said earlier, if 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 you get if you have more athletes mm -hmm. or former athletes that want to get actively involved, mm -hmm. I promise you they wouldn't care about the level that you're getting involved with. Yeah, and and I think you know, especially now, because I think uh, there was a top uh, top recruit. I don't, I never say his name right. Um, I think it's McCurr or Maker, the seven footer. He was he was in the NBA draft. Mm -hmm. Um, and he pulled out, and he's going to Howard. Yeah. He's yeah, going to Howard, yeah, the yeah, seven footer. So I, I just think the more, you know, the more of that type of, you know, good attention to these, you know, HBCUs mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, NAIA mm -hmm. schools that you're getting, then you'll, you almost kind of like separate the, mm -hmm. I'd rather go Big Ten than NAIA. Yeah. And it, 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 at the end of the day, if you're good, you're good. You if go. you play, you play. You get a good education. That's right. And you learn in the game of basketball right. and whatever happens after that happens. That's right. I think, I think, Sandy, and it's funny that you say that I made a post, you know, it's, 
people don't understand. They think that you have to play at a certain level mm-hmm. in order to get drafted to the NBA or get Talk drafted to the Dennis. NFL. You know, I, Scottie Pippen was an NAI. We came out the same year. Wow. Okay, NAI player. Mm-hmm. Okay, out of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dennis Rodman, yeah. same thing. Okay, Talk Charles Charles Oakley, HBCU. Yeah. Okay, a lot of guys. But the thing is that people think that you have to go to a certain school. Mm-hmm. You got to go to Ohio State to be drafted. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. Trust me. Everybody on Ohio State's football team mm-hmm. that's seniors yeah. or juniors, they're not getting drafted that's to the right. NFL. That's okay, right. You have to go out there and produce, okay? And, again, if you no matter what level, what school, mm-hmm. if you can play yeah. and you're efficient at what you do, you'll have an opportunity to parlay and go to another level. Yeah, and, and I definitely believe that. And I even believe it on the women's side as well. No matter. Um, not, not, it don't matter if you're a guy, it don't That's matter right. if you're a girl, don't matter if, what, whatever the case is, if you if you learn the game, mm-hmm. and it could be any game, I'm not even just talking about basketball at this point, if you learn the game, you dedicate and you, you mm-hmm. put the time in and you're committed to your craft, Whatever is supposed to be meant for you to happen, right. it's gonna it's right. gonna happen, and the the sky is the limit. That's right. Um, so I, I love that you just touched on that because I, I I'm not a fan of people's mentalities yeah. these days when I mean, they really do believe they can't make it if they're not on a higher mm-hmm. status. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with with, with programs, AAU yeah. programs. Yeah. Well, I need to go play for this program. Why? Right. You're going to be the same person going to play for that program that you would be if you came and played in my program. Right. Okay. The program it doesn't matter now. Yeah. Different programs get you different exposure. That, I was just about to say that. But we gonna go to the same tournaments mm-hmm. that all the other programs are gonna and go get to. Get this. Once you become good enough, the exposure they gonna come they to go, you. They gonna come to they you. They gonna find out where you playing. They don't care what tournaments right. you playing at. They are gonna right. come and see like exactly right. where you where That's you're right. playing at. So I definitely I'm with you on that yeah. one, Dennis, for sure. Um, I just want to uh, remind all our viewers um, as well, if you guys uh, want to have or ask Dennis any questions um, throughout the show, uh, feel free to chime in. The one, give me the number so I'll, I'll make sure I don't tell them the wrong number. It's a 419-540-3566. Again, that's 419-540-3566. Call in if you want to talk to Dennis or ask him a, a few questions. Hey, if any of you are out there, if y'all some fans, this is your time now to chime in and ask him whatever you would like. Um, I shouldn't say whatever you would like because we might get some <laughs> weird questions. <laughs> but, again, that's 419-540-3566. Call into the 419 Grind Studio here. Um, so, Dennis, I mean, just sitting here talking to you, like, it, it, it's a pleasure. And you know what, Dennis, you've actually been a huge mentor for me personally. And a lot of people don't know this. You know, Dennis, he and he is he's very humble. But behind, you know, behind the the closed doors, you know, Dennis, he's always been a help. And that's one thing that I love. Like you've talked about, you know, most of the show so far and giving back. And it's not just giving back to the youth. You're giving back to those who are committed to what they're doing as well. Um, you've been a supporter of the Toledo threat. Um, and it was only, you know, we had to have you on the show. It was only, it only made sense. Um, but you've just been, you know, you've even helped us, you know, as far as me personally, kind of knowing the game from the business side, um, as well too, you know, with you being here and you've, you've talked to you and you've been a part of different programs and then big meetings with high yeah. status people. And you know how to deal with these people specifically. And, you know, you've, giving me the same knowledge and I'm now sharing the same knowledge with others. And that's how it's supposed to be. So I was, I mean, me and you talk when two, three years ago, yes. and it's like, Hey, I'm just getting back in town. Blase, yeah. blase. Yes. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting that warm welcome. Yeah. And I thought that I should get Yeah, happens to everybody. Yeah. We've been gone. We've been MIA. Right. Okay. We can't expect to, uh, people, we can't expect people to greet us with open arms when we've right. been gone. You know, right. again, and you talked about it earlier. You put the work in. Yeah. I look at you now. Yeah. You know, I mean, I see you. You're smiling all the time. Yeah, you're excited. You know, <laughs> Every time I, 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 I read something or see something, I might mm-hmm. see your name in it. Yeah. So, again, it, everything takes time. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, just do what needs to be done. That's right. Okay? And, and, and have be a high-character person mm-hmm. and uh, treat people fairly. Yeah. And again, I think you can pretty much do what, what need what you what you want to do. Yeah, and you know what? One thing I I love what you said, and you've told me back then. You know, it's a process. It's going to take time, um, and I appreciate that advice because I was one who was like, "Oh my gosh, why is everybody telling me no? Like, no one's saying yes, and this is so hard. I, I'm just about to stop." Like that was literally my. And you don't even know this, but before that conversation that I had with you way back when, mm-hmm. I was on the verge of like giving up mm-hmm. because I just I didn't see the support that mm-hmm. you know from the city and and I, I stood the course and kind of just did what you 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 suggested that I do you know just 
And some now process. we got some. Now me and you got some and other stuff here. cooking, and right? Now we, and we now got we got some, got some other stuff, other stuff cooking, cooking. You know, you know getting I, ready to help out in the right. community right. together. That's so right. I just, it's just crazy how things turn yeah, around and come yeah. full circle. You know what? I, I learned. I, I'll tell you this, not to interrupt. It's funny that you said I, I kept getting no. Yeah. But I had a coach tell me a long time ago: yes is the best answer. Mm. No is the second best. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Yes is the best. No is the second best. Yeah. All right. Can't get no worse than that. And at the end of the day. You keep working. I remember the no that you told me. Mm -hmm. I keep working on that no sometimes shifts over to a yes. Yeah, you know, and but that's right. You can't get defeated when you hear no. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you missing a jump shot or you missing a layup or you missing a, a last second uh, game winner. Right. You know, it's just, it's what it is. Things happen. Yeah, and it's so, keep moving. It's so easy to be discouraged <laughs> yeah. once you've heard a no. And that's yeah. this is just for anybody out there who's listening. It doesn't matter about sports, whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. It's so easy to get discouraged, but know that, a no could be a good thing, right. too. You know, right. you never know. And I'm going to go spiritual for two seconds. Mm -hmm. You never know what God is protecting you mm -hmm. from or, or he might have a better plan right. for you. And and no, it's OK. That's right. That's it's OK. Right. And you can even learn from those no's, you know, if it was a meeting you went into and you got to know, OK, well, go back, re revisit the meeting right. in your there mind. You go you know, study some things that you could have done mm -hmm. differently and do better next time. And you might get a yes. That's right. Um, but just to encourage her out there, you're going to hear more no's than yes. Right. It's That's just right. a confirmation. And I'm here to tell you that. And Dennis is here <laughs> to tell right. you that. Um, so, yeah. So I think that's just awesome. The, just the fact that you've been such a consistent and positive uh, role model for me. Yep. So this is my time to tell you. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. I mean, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't, I'm glad that I was able to help. <laughs> right. That you did all the work. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. And then we, you know, everyone, if you don't know, uh, Dennis and I, we've had some time on BCSN mm -hmm. as well. Um, we've gotten to plug into just different ventures. And I just think basketball, again, mm -hmm. took us there. That's right. Um, and you just never know where a sport, like you mentioned with our youth, can take you. That's right. It's not, it's, it's, it, I always tell people it's not about the sport. It's what the sport can do for you. That's right. You know, a lot of people get caught up or people say, well, Dennis, you're always talking about the sport. No, I'm, I'm talking about the sport because I know mm -hmm. what the sport can do for people. That's right. Because I'm, um, I, I could, you know, I'm one of those people. You're one of those people. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I was fortunate to get to certain levels, but you know what? There's a lot of people that didn't get to to the highest level, but sports right. still, and they're still paving the way right. for those uh, those people. So again, it's not about the sport; it's what the sport can do for you. Yeah, and, and you're right. And Dennis, I played. You know, I played at the University of Detroit Mercy. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed with a, f a full ride to play there. I played overseas for a hot second, and you know, I didn't make it as far as you did, but basketball took me right. to where I am today. That's right. Um, so just to kind of amen what you said, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so. This part of the show, I'm actually super excited about. Um, I get really excited about little things, and this is something that's a, a big one. Um, but so what we call it is play review. So what we're going to do, actually, um, I'm kind of changing things a little bit with the show. Um, and with the play review, you're actually going to pull from this cup here that has a few questions in there, Dennis. Just some okay. fun things for us to get to know maybe a little different side of I'm you. Me. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> so um, go ahead, Dennis. Go ahead and pull, and let's see what we got here. I'm excited to get to know you a okay. little better. All right. All right. So the first question is, if you could keep everything the same in the present, what's one thing, what one thing would you change about your past? I think uh, as, as a player, I think, uh, again, I would have been a little more selfish. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm just talking about me as a player right. when I, when I got to the NBA, okay. um, I thought that I was, um, a little, I, I deferred a little bit. Okay. I deferred a little bit. And again, I, I, that's just the way that I was taught as a player to be a team player. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on, on that level, yeah, it's too much money. It's a business, it's a lot of money mm -hmm. involved. And if you want to continue to do that, okay, you have to do a little more. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, again, I, I cared a lot. I cared and I was, a t I was a team, I was a team player, but I, if I had to do it over again, I'd have mm -hmm. been a lot more selfish. You know, and I think, and I'll kind of share a tidbit for myself as well. Um, just because I love this question, <laughs> I would actually basketball related as well. Um, back in the day, Dennis, when I was the summer going into my senior year in college, one of my coaches who actually recruited me, she got a job at Auburn mm -hmm. and, um, her name is David, Deja, Deja Charles. Um, she's no longer with us. So with God rest her soul. Mm -hmm. Um, but she invited me to come with her. She invited me to come with her and I didn't go. Mm -hmm. And I would say the young lady who she brought with her, I'm not even going to say her name because people would probably think I was crazy if they, they knew her name, but she's now playing in the WNBA. And I always think back like, you know what? That could have been me. So 
if I would go back and change something, I'm going to Auburn. There you go. Yeah, it's big time. That's the power. That's one of them power fives. Yeah. Big time program. Yeah. Yes, yes. So go ahead. Okay. So we got another one. All right. Let's see. All right, Dennis. Oh, when you have leisure time, what do you do? I ride motorcycles. I like boating. I oh, like camping. Really? Yeah. Wait, you ride motorcycles? Yeah. I didn't even yeah, know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big, and I got I got a street car too. I got a street oh, car, sweet. so I like either getting in my street car, riding my motorcycle, or I sold my boat a couple of years ago. Oh wow! Uh, but I do. I had a camper okay. out at the, at the marina, so I'm not gonna I like lie, to Dennis. I wouldn't give you camping. I wouldn't look at you yeah, and say he likes the camp. Yeah, nobody. I mean, nobody does. But yeah, that's what I like to do. <laughs> oh, I like cool. doing things like that. All right, come on, Dennis. Let's 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 uh, learn some more about you. Go ahead. Okay. There's only a few in there. Oh, it's not a lot. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is seafood. Seafood? Yep. I like so, fried fish. Okay, fried. I was going to say, get more specific. I like fried, fried fish. fish. I like crab legs. Okay. Yeah, so seafood is my thing. Nice. I don't eat beef and pork. I haven't, I haven't had that in 16, 17 years. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so I don't So I don't are you with like that. some type of not nope, nope, vegan I just, or you nope, just don't I just, eat the... When I lived in Columbus, I had a doctor that was a mentor, mm -hmm. and he kind of got me off the whole beef and pork thing. Okay. And I, one day I came home and um, took everything out the freezer and out the refrigerator, threw it away, okay. and that was the last time. And I used to love pork chops. Wow. So but <laughs> to this day, I don't crave pork chops. Wow. Well, that's yeah. probably why you can still dunk. You, yeah, that you might eat, be a, that might pretty be a good. Little, yeah, you eat pretty yeah, good. About 16, 17 years. Oh, wow. I'm not going to lie. I cannot say that at all. <laughs> I just had some chicken yesterday. <laughs> no, I eat chicken and fish. Well, chicken yeah, and fish, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to say steak. I definitely just had a steak in the last okay, month, so okay. for sure. No, I don't eat steak. That's all right, Dennis. You missing out though. You all probably right. don't think so. I don't. I, I don't. I love steak. <laughs> a lot of people do, and I guess it's good for you. But I just I don't eat it. Wow. So, oh, what's your current favorite song? My current favorite song? Yeah. Is, I, I like I like people gonna look at me like you fifty five years old. <laughs> and you listening to Rick Ross? I like what? I like I like Rick Ross's music. Oh. Well, I would never have guessed yeah, that I at all. I love Rick Ross's music. So Rick when I'm on, Ross. Yeah, when I'm on my bike and I'm playing my stereo. It's Rick Ross. And I pull up next to somebody, that's what you're going to hear. <laughs> you're going to hear Rick Ross playing. So if I see someone riding a motorcycle that's down the right. street and I hear Rick Ross, that's, I know it's that's you. That's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> all right. That's what's up. That's what's, I think it's one more in there, Dennis. I would have never guessed that for yeah. sure. That's all my right. guy. I was just listening to him in the office today. Nice. Wait, well, what about Rick Ross? Why do you like his music? I, just, I like the way he sounds, and I like the way he, huh. I like, yeah, I like his music. <laughs> yeah, I just like his music. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What would you prefer, or would you prefer, oh, this is a good question. Would you prefer a million-dollar mansion or a reasonable home? Well, I've had both. Okay. I've had both. So, Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, I've had both. I can't, <laughs> I can't me, lie. Dennis. Yeah, I can't lie. Um <laughs> I'll take either or. Okay. You know, I mean, when I had a million dollar house, mm -hmm. it was just me. Ah. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So yeah. So, but I mean, I'm 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 okay. I'm comfortable. I live well. Yeah. So, yeah. So as long as I'm comfortable and living well, I'm okay. See, that's how I feel, and I've always said it. You know, if I ever get to your status, mm. Dennis, if, if I ever get there, um, when I get there, I should say, um, I've always said I would live like in just a reasonable mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. just because I just don't want to. It's nothing it's wrong. A lot of maintenance. Yeah, a lot of maintenance and it's with nothing wrong with like having a, mm -hmm. a huge house or anything. But I just like to stay low key. Mm -hmm. I like right. to stay in my own little corner. And I think I would just be modest and mm -hmm. just have a reasonable home. I was young back then. I was oh young. Yeah. yeah, I was young. I mean, now ask me back then for sure. I'm taking a million dollar mansion. Yeah, yeah, I was and, young. You know, me and my friends, we all about <laughs> to be up in there with rooms and everything. So. But no, so, uh, well, Dennis, that is all the time that we have this evening. Um, thank you so much for no being problem. on our podcast. This has been awesome and just love that you came to support us um, here. Keep in mind also, I just want to do a little plug here for our Girls Development League. Um, if you guys are interested, if you have young girls, um, COVID is kind of pushing some things back for us, but um, you can email us at ToledoThreat at gmail.com or you can visit us at ToledoThreat.com. Um, if you have girls who are, I would say, between the 7th and the 12th grade, um, just give us a holler. We have our program that we're just waiting to start um, once these uh, cases hopefully calm down a little bit and we can actually get back um, moving. So be sure to um, tune in or check in to our Girls Development League. Um, and then also we have a um, really big show next week um, for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm, we're calling it actually Family Affair. 
Um, my sister Vicky will be here okay. uh, for the holidays, so yeah. I'm going to bring her on and uh, let everyone get a chance to get to know her better, too. Yeah, you just make sure you guys stay safe. Oh, yeah. That's the main thing. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. But, Dennis, thank you so much again for being here. And until next time, catch us every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Until next time, nothing but net.